Hey, guys. So the attendance tonight was 12,171. The gate was 1.1 million. It's the highest grossing sporting event in the arena's history. Um, fight of the night, no shocker, I don't think, for anybody, Smoker versus Elliot. Um, the performance of the nights go to Whitaker and Demetrius Johnson. So they all won $50,000. Congratulations to them. What a night. Nice change of pace from uh, last week with all the drama and then, like, no drama tonight. Exactly. Now, th seriously, this was, you know, obviously the most stacked card of the year so far. And this was as uh, flawless an event as, as we could ever have. Um, it, it was literally the perfect event. Talk about your flyweight champ for a minute because, obviously, he's on another level than all of us probably understood. So what's crazy is he, he does what he does here tonight, right? And I'm doing an interview with Brazil, and I start to walk away, and I hear him ask his coach, what did I do wrong? I stopped and said, hey, coach, let me answer this for you. Nothing. He did nothing. I mean, he, he literally, first of all, he looked incredible on his feet. The punch stat numbers are ridiculous, right? Then he goes to the ground and uh, is absolutely dominating and goes for the most dangerous move you could try to pull off, an arm bar. Not only pulling off an arm bar when you're dominating like that, but against the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion. Uh, the guy is an absolute freak. of Joe Rogan was blowing me up. You know, this guy's a wizard. He's the greatest ever. And, and Rogan's going, you know, Rogan, he's, he's a Jiu-Jitsu nut, so he's going crazy and, and uh, well-deserved. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, too. I mean, we've already conceded he's the number one pound for pound right now. Are you willing to say he's the number one guy in the history yeah. of the sport at this point? Listen, time? he's got one more fight, and he breaks Anderson Silva's record, and he continues. Listen, he's already the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter in the world, and he, and he strives to be better each time, and, and he gets better each time, literally destroying people. Yeah, th this kid is th – th this kid could be considered the GOAT right now, and or, you, or to give Anderson Silva the true respect, you wait till he actually breaks the record and – I, it's hard to not call this guy the greatest of all time. So for him to break it, though, he's got to have somebody else to challenge him, and it seems like he's starting to run out of guys. Yeah. So what do you do? Anderson Silva had that problem, too, you know what I mean? Um, w when, you, when you run through guys, as long as, you know, these two have run through guys, yeah. But I promise you we'll find somebody. Uh, talk about Robert Whitaker for a minute because, obviously, he, he blew up the guy that, you know, wow. was in the top three or four guys. So he's been a guy that I've been a big fan of for a very long time. And basically what I said is the first clinch is going to tell how this fight's going to go. And, man, that, that was exciting. And then, I mean, he literally took his time. He was calm, smooth, composed, you know, jumped in and did damage when it was time to do it and, you know, kept his distance when he felt he – again, another flawless fight. I mean, he fought a perfect fight. Rose Namajunas fought a flawless fight, and the list goes on and on of, of great fights that we saw tonight. Robert obviously talked about, you know, saying he wants Bisping, but obviously that's not necessarily in the yeah. cards in the, in the near term. But uh, what would you recommend for a guy like that? Sit back and wait? I know you never want guys to sit yeah, back and wait. I'm never a big fan of sitting back and waiting because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I've seen guys who have opted to sit back and wait when I told them not to. And, and, and you know what happens? You don't make any money. You sit around for a long time. And, and, and listen, the unfortunate part of this business, well, the unfortunate, unfortunate part of this business is people forget real quick, you know. So whether you come off a great win or you come off a horrible loss, our, 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 our memories are very short. Uh, Dana, Stephen St. John from Sports Radio 810 here in Kansas City. Uh, you mentioned the gate and the attendance. Did you see enough support this week and uh, hear with the crowd that uh, uh, makes you want to bring UFC back to Kansas City in the near future? Of course, absolutely. And especially when we break records. That, that always excites me, so yeah. I want to thank the city. This place was great. Very, very fun city to hang out in. Um, and uh, the crowd was amazing tonight. Really great fans. I had a blast here. So thank you. And you mentioned Tim Elliott. What do you see in his uh, near future after this win tonight? Uh, so that fight, that fight tonight, you see a handful of those in your lifetime. You know, we, we saw BJ Penn versus Joe Daddy Stevenson. We saw uh, Diego Sanchez versus Nick Diaz. We saw Carl Parisian. Um, uh, versus Diego Sanchez, you know, you see a handful of those incredible technical ground battles that are so fun to watch. That's another one to go down in the books. Um, obviously a great win for Tim and, 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 a, and a fight of the night type fight. So, yeah.
Amazing. Uh, Mr. White, uh, keeping with talking about Tim, you know, he this is his second run in the UFC. He uh, he had a good fight against Demetrius Johnson, comes out here and gets fought in the night. What type of security does that buy him? In the yeah, well, he comes off the ultimate fighter, mm -hmm. you know, has a great fight against DJ, looks, looks incredible tonight in one of those handful of fights you'll see in your life. Not a shitty, not a shitty run for him lately, right? He's, he's looking good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you've cut him once before. Does, does, what kind of – do you see a better future for him now? Yeah. I mean, listen, this is, this is no different than football, baseball, basketball, or anything else. When you perform, you continue to roll. It's, it's when you stop performing and you accrue, you know, a certain amount of losses. That's, that's when you end up getting cut. What have you seen him change or adapt to that's given him this opportunity? You know, I'm probably going, you know, when he did get cut from here, he went out and worked on his game. Some guys fall apart and other guys keep going. You know, he kept going. He kept improving, um, you know. And, and trying to become a better fighter. And then once he got the opportunity again, he came in and, he, and he's making the most of it. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, Dane McGuire from 590 Fox Sports in St. Louis. I just want to kind of get your thoughts on Missouri has a great history in M MMA and combat sports. What made – now the right time to bring the UFC to the state of Missouri and Kansas City. I've wanted to come to Missouri for a long time, but, you know, it just didn't work out in the past, and, and now was the time, was the perfect time. And I always knew that once we come, came here, when we go to St. Louis, you know, I, 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 I knew it was going to be big. I think St. Louis is going to be big, too. Do you have any idea when that's in the cards? St. Louis? I yes. don't know. Yes. No. Soon, I hope. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and uh, lastly, uh, again, um, as far as the main event goes, out of all the champions you have, when you come to a new market, what made Demetrius the right fit? Um, you know, it, it, everything's all about timing. You know, this was a big Fox card, and uh, we had a, we had a rough start out the gate. We had an amazing year last year. We had a rough start out of the gates because of a lot of injuries and people who had just fought. And uh, now we're going to start picking up steam the rest of this year. People are healthy, and this was the first big card of the year. And man, did it live up to the hype! Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Dana, uh, Rose Namajunas, uh, brilliant performance tonight against Michelle Watterson. Where is she in the title picture? Do you think she's ready for another title shot? I do. You know, I, I think in her fight with Carolina, you saw how Carolina fought Joanna. I mean, that fight was, was amazing. She looked great. And, uh, you know, Rose went back to the drawing board and came back with the, you know, she looked amazing tonight. She couldn't have fought a more perfect fight. And... Uh, um, you know, she thinks she's ready for a title, and, and I agree with her after tonight's performance. Any other questions? You done with me? Thank you so much, guys. We, we had a blast here, and, and I really appreciate it. Fans, too, thank you. Robert, congrats, man. Holy cow, dude. That was kind of crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was a good fight. <laughs> I, I'd say it was a good fight. He got you another $50,000, which is, which is pretty nice, right? Uh, definitely. You know, every, every cent that I can give back to my, to, to, to my training staff and you know, provide my family for is always good. He had a couple moments in the fight where he did some good things, but you were dominant from start to finish. Did you expect the fight to go that way where you just really – really controlled things throughout? Um, expects, not, not, not the word, it's uh, I prepared for, for the fight to be that way. I, uh, I've been training countless hours, you know, in the gym, out of the gym for, for this fight and we, 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 
went through all the situations and scenarios that, are, that could possibly happen, and uh, we drilled them. We drilled them, and, and this was a scenario that, you know, that, that might have, that, that arose. And I had been working that, and, uh, you know, I executed, executed a game plan. When, when you hurt him, the, the, did you remember the first time that you hurt him in the fight, and did you feel anything kind of go out of him at that point? Could you feel that in the fight? Um, I, I think it might be a fighter thing, or maybe it's, a, it's part of who I am, but I know when I've hurt my opponent. And um, when I know I've hurt my opponent, I, I know how to keep hurting my opponent. I know how to use that to my advantage. And, um, you know, I, I did that. Did you feel overlooked at all? I mean, I think if you look at the betting numbers, he was like a three-to-one favorite or something like that. So that would seem to say that the odds makers were overlooking you, even if some of the, if some of the fans might not have been. But did you feel that going into the fight, and did that put any kind of a chip on your shoulder? Uh, not at all. You know, um, the odd makers don't know who I am. You know, I, I live in Australia. I, f I train out of there. I stay down there. I'm so far away from everywhere else, you know. Though, but um, I don't think Jacare overlooked me either. You know, he, he's, a, he's a veteran of the sport, you know, all, all props to him. And he would have taken me seriously from, from day dot. And, um, but it just is how, how it went, you know. Obviously, you, you mentioned uh, in the cage afterwards that you'd be interested in a fight with Michael Bisping. That, that's probably not in the cards <coughs> immediately. What kind of plans do you have then uh, in terms of getting to a title shot? I mean, do you take two, three fights, whatever it takes, in the meantime before that title picture clears up, or do you sit back and chill? Um, you know, that's, that's a discussion I have with my corners and stuff, but uh, I'm on my title run. I'm on my run. I want that belt. You know, uh, Bisping owed me a fight. If, he, if he's tied up or if he loses it or whatever, I want that belt. You know, wherever it goes, uh, I, I want it. Uh, Robert, obviously nice to show out for the, for, for the Australians as well. What does it mean to you to come out here and do that for your countrymen? Um, it's why I do the sport, man. It's, it's why I rise above and beyond. To, to be able to come out on the world, world stage with some of the top cal best fighters in the world, you know, and uh, to be able to do that for, you know, with, with a country behind me, to representing Australia and New Zealand, it's, um, it's unbelievable. You know, it's, it's the highest honour and privilege. Uh, Robert, at one point, uh, Jacques Array took you down and uh, took you back briefly. Uh, what was going through your mind right then? And then when you were able to escape, uh, how much did it help your confidence? Um, I don't know if it helped my confidence in the, in, in the match, per se. It's, uh, I, I had been working countless hours, you know, with, with Alex Parates and Hugo Nunez. They've been drilling me and drilling me in the worst, worst situations. And um, I knew to stay calm, stay calm, collected. He has to keep me there. And I know how to wrestle. I know how to grapple. And uh, I just got to get back up. Um, Luke Rockhold has offered to uh, face you at uh, July at UFC um, 213. Is this something you'd be interested in and ready for? It's news to me. <laughs> you told me. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. Well, he, uh, he tweeted it out to Ariwani, and so it's, I'm passing the information along. <laughs> it's it's cool, like, um, but um, it's too fresh. I got I got to get back home to my kids. I got to see my wife. Um, yeah, let me see my family first. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's uh, it's a bit rushed. It's too much to process at once. Thank you very much. Could be bad. <laughs> well, Wilson, uh, talk about the fight a little bit. I mean, obviously, you went up against a guy that people consider the best fighter in the world right now. Was he everything you expected once you got in the cage with him? Yes, man. Uh, you know, everything that they expected. You know, that's what I saw tonight. You know, uh, he's uh, very game, you know, uh, very ready, pretty much everywhere. I was pretty comfortable, you know, in the fight. You know, uh, I was little by little, you know, getting to my game plan. But uh, he he did really good. Uh, keep the distance and keep his uh, his hips and his head away from me. You know, I tried to you know to close the distance. You know, but uh, he did a good job. 
you know, keep me away from him, you know, and uh, just, I think, all, all the props to him, man, like, at the end of the day, um, this is a huge opportunity for me, you know, I really want to thank, you know, Dan White, you know, the, all UFC, all the matchmakers for this opportunity, you know, and all the fans in Kansas City, all the fans in Brazil, man, they show so much love, the UFC Brazil, you know, and all the media, and everybody really, like, you know, like, a lot of people give me props, and, uh, you know, um, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a tough to swallow, you know, uh, you know, it's a tough loss, but uh, it is what it is, man, you know, that, that's not my first loss, you know, and then, you know, have a, you know, um, a lot of wins, I just gotta, you know, take a couple of days off, you know, get back to my coaches, you know, and, you know, get better for the next fight, but uh, I just blessed to be in this position, to, you know, to the, the walk out to the main event, it was the, the most, like, special moment of my life so far, and, you know, it was an amazing night, you know, like, unfortunately, you know, I came out with, you know, with the loss, but uh, it is what it is, and I'm going to come back strong in the next fight. As a, as a fighter, how frustrating is it to be in a fight with a guy like that when, when you're doing things well and looking good, but he's just not there at the end of your punches and at the end of, at the end of your kicks? Do, yeah. do you reach a point in the first two rounds where you're, where you're frustrated? Uh, just not, not really. Um, no, I'm pretty good keep my composure, you know. Like, I have amazing coaches, you know, between rounds. My coaches tell me what to do, you know, so I have to follow, you know. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, like, uh, he did everything that he did, but then I just couldn't, uh, you know, overcome that, you know. Like, but it wasn't because I was frustrated, you know, just because I just, you know, like, he did, he did a good job avoiding, you know. We've seen him uh, submit guys before. Did you expect if, if you were not going to be able to win this fight that that was how he would be able to... To get you? Uh, not really, man. You know, you know, that's where I come from. I come from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, and uh, that hurts more than a knockout for me, you know. But uh, you know, it just it just props to him, you know. Like at the end, you know, at the end of the day, I made a mistake and he capitalized on it, you know. And uh, I just have to move forward, you know. Like obviously go back to the drawing board, you know, watch my mis my mistakes. But uh, he did a good job right before the arm bar. The arm, the arm bar was not surprise, you know. It just it was. Very good. It was he, he, he was really fast doing, but you know, like uh, I was just like you no know, uh, before. You know, he really he, he was he really hurt me a little bit on the elbows. Uh, that's why I lost control of the fight. Wilson, was there anything about his attack that surprised you tonight? Not really, man. Not really. Uh, nothing really surprised me. You know, like we all know how good he is, how fast he is. You know, like a uh, couple right handers. You know that he saw the. Couple ones that was good to time, and a couple ones he just caught me flash. You know, he did, he look. Um, uh, one thing I would say though, you know, that he's really strong. You know, like stronger than I thought he was. You know, like his legs are lighting fast and strong. You know, so uh, he really did not hurt me with the kicks, but uh, it was just I was impressed how fast and how strong it was. You know, you fought at uh, fly or flyweight, featherweight, bantamweight, all those. Is is he the toughest uh, fighter you've ever faced, and is the strongest fighter you ever faced? Uh, he's he, he, yes, I could say that, man. He's you know, like he's definitely you know, the, the best fighter ever fought. You know, he's the pound for pound you know, best fighter in the world right now. You know, and he deserves all that. You know, he has a very very uh, well around the game. You know, he look um, pretty good everywhere. You know, so you know, not, not much I can say. So I can definitely say that he's uh, the best guy I fought so far. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Have a great night.
Hello. Hey, Rose. Hi. Congrats. That was amazing victory. Nice job. Thank you. Talk to us about that a little bit, how good it felt, because we, you, you know, we talked earlier in the week about, you know, a little bump in the road that you had last summer, but, but you felt like you were back and ready to prove something this time. Yeah, um, it feels really good to have my team all together and in the corner. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just was flowing out there. I had a little bit of like, a, I had to get my movement kind of, you know, uh, I, I, I felt like I made a few mistakes in the first round, but uh, I just had to stay calm and go back to the corner and just take a deep breath. And the second round, I knew it was going to come together. You were the betting favorite in this fight, but it still it felt like a lot of people completely overlooked you, like it was sort of a, a situation of what have you done for me lately, and she, yeah. she had done something lately, and, and you hadn't necessarily. Right, did, yeah. Did, did it feel like that to you? And if so, how vindicated do you feel getting a win the way that you did? Um, I don't know if it necessarily felt like that strongly to me just because I don't really pay attention to that stuff anymore, you know. Um, it used to have an effect over my life, but I don't really pay attention. I mean, my phone has been off, like, almost the entire week. So, um, to me, just eliminating those outside voices is the best um, and just listening to you. And um, But, yeah, it, it, you know, uh, that's kind of, like, what I expected, you know. It, it's, it's just part of the business. That's just how people um, think. You know, the hardcore fans that are – you know, uh, about me, they, they always are going to support me. And I think that, um, they're always going to, you know, know that I'm capable of greatness, but, um, yeah, I think that, uh, the, 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 the kind of like, um, uneducated fans is well, the ones that's like kind of behind the hype trains and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't know if she really had a hype train because I mean, she had a spectacular performance. I mean, she was glowing at the weigh-ins, like she's on point. Uh, I take nothing away from her. Like she, she was ready, and um, I knew that going into this fight, so, yeah. In terms of what to expect um, physically from her in the fight, she seemed to have a strategy of going after your knee, and in the second round, it seemed like you were kind of slapping at your <laughs> knee and slapping at your leg as if you were inviting her, you know what, keep doing this because it doesn't bother me. Was that what you were trying to sort of say with that? Yeah, um, definitely, like, shutting down people's best uh, – you know, weapon is definitely the key to beating your opponents. And that was kind of my way of doing that. Um, I actually planned on doing that beforehand because I knew she was going to do that. I know that Jackson camps, they, they like to attack the knees like that a lot. You know, John Jones is pretty notorious for that. So, um, you know, it still was messing me up too. I knew she was going to do it, but it was just really quick. Um, and it was kind of like throwing me off just a little bit. But um, I just made it up in my mind that that's not going to bother me. You know, it's just a, it's just a defensive tactic. I'm not going to let, let that break me. And I'm going to break her with it, knowing that it's, it's not bothering me. When uh, Dana was in here earlier, he said he, he believes you are indeed, you know, ready for another title shot. Uh, what kind of – can you just kind of reiterate what kind of – plan you have? I mean, are you ready for that to be the next one? If you need to take one or two in the meantime, is that what you're willing to do? What's the what's the situation? Yeah, I mean, there's no need to get too specific just right the second, but um, I changed all my, like, email and, uh, and um, uh, like, computer passwords to ANU 2017, so that's kind of just what I have in, in mind, just that general goal. Um, so sometimes it's for the year it's over with, but it's I don't want to put no specific stamp on it just yet. <laughs> yeah, it was, I didn't take all my passwords, but almost all of them. <laughs> 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 you know, you got to tell yourself these things. <laughs> Rose, the, the, the big kick that landed, that, that really uh, the change of fight and hurt Michelle, can, can you tell me a little bit about what you saw maybe in the moments leading up to that that, that, that uh, showed you that maybe she was open and then when you landed it, can, can you take me through that? Yeah, specifically I remember um, – I think it was almost like two different instances, but one in particular, I remember she was kind of like pulling away from uh, a clinch or some type of exchange, um, just that distance from like that A to B range or whatever. And um, I went to go throw a right hand and it barely just missed her face. Um, so I knew, um, or at least my body knew, I don't know if I um, particularly planned for it, but uh, you know, my body just kind of took over and, and knew that that range was there with the kick rather than the punch. Um, she was just leaning a little bit too far. And then I hesitated right um, at the right time. It was just perfect. It was just, yeah, perfect. You had a question? Thank you, guys.
Champ, congrats. Oh, I guess is the moral of the story that if you ask Demetrius Johnson to go to the ground and play with some jujitsu, then you, you might get what you ask for? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Wilson Ace, he's a great guy. Um, he's had 30 MMA fights. Uh, he's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and this is the first time he's ever got submitted. So that just shows you the type of stuff I'm working up with uh, Matt Hume and Brad Kurtz and AMC Pickridge and Kirkland, Washington. Um, I'm a white belt in jiu-jitsu. I, I haven't really been able to put a lot of time into my gi game, um, but I'm always putting a lot of effort into uh, my submission grappling. I mean, we've seen you submit guys before. We've seen you submit guys with, you know, one second left in a 25-minute fight, which is amazing in and of itself. But uh, as you went through your through your prep work for this fight, was that something that you thought was in the cards? That you know what? Hey, I'll go down to the ground with him and tap him. You know, I, I don't. Like I said, ever since I was an amateur, I've never put predictors on my fights. You know, I I'm well-rounded enough that if I see something, I can capitalize on that. And I think after the fight, when I got up, I looked at my coach's face. They're like, "What?" Good job, and I mean, I have the skill set to do it. Um, so I was happy to be able to uh, work the things that we worked on, and then everything just worked out perfect. In terms of what he was doing in the fight, it seemed like he had a fairly solid-looking game plan. He just you were never around to to get hit on the end of most of his punches. Do you feel that that, that was the situation in there? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. You know, I worked extremely hard this this camp. I was very focused. Uh, and we watched a lot of video on him. We had Bibiana Fernandez come down, work with me, Matt, and the rest of the guys. And like, okay, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the man from the jungle. I'm pure jujitsu. This is what he likes to do. And for us to be able to take a step back and listen to Bibiano and, and ask him questions, you know, as a jujitsu practitioner, why do you want to do this? Why does this make you feel comfortable. So when we got in there, you know, last night while everybody was out, you know, rehydrating, having a good time, like, yeah, I made weight. I was in my workout room working out, going over the things we need to do to execute. And Tyron Woodley was there to witness it. And he goes, dude, like, I literally just watched what you were doing last night in the training room in the octagon. Uh, <clears throat> you're the number one guy in the world right now. You, you've set yourself up to be the number one guy of all time. Um, are you at a point yet, like in this 10, title fight run where you can start ranking some of your performances? And if so, where does something like this kind of fall on, on the list? Well, it's hard because I haven't been on the scene, scene yet. I haven't seen the fight. Uh, but it, it was a good one. I think everything that we worked on, um, I would say the NCAA wrestling tournament kind of got me uh, – fired back up, Matt Hume's son, he just started wrestling, and them going and hearing them talking about all oh, wrestling was awesome last night. So I was like, I need to get my wrestling back on point. You know, my background's wrestling. I've out-wrestled guys who, who've gone to college and wrestle, so uh, that was a huge inspiration for me to get my wrestling, and my takedown defense tonight was perfect, even though he's been able to blast through people. <clears throat> and, and they had a great game plan. You know, I talked to Dominic Cruz already. He goes, you guys are, you guys are well prepared. Now that you've accomplished the 10 straight successful defenses, c can you put it into perspective what that means now that you've done something that only Anderson Silva has done and you have a chance to break that record now? Yeah, it's definitely awesome. I think any champion in the UFC or, or any uh, sport, you know, the, the Chicago Bulls, you know, when uh, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and, and Dennis Rodman were together, they wanted to try to get as many championships as they could. For me, you know, I got 10. I could take this belt home. And hopefully next time I fight, I can break it. And then I might go for 13 or 14. Why, why not set the bar high? You know, Hussein Bolt, he's the fastest man on land. I'm the fastest man in mixed martial arts. So I'm going to keep on proving that and hope I can set it to like 15. Then I'm retired. Then I'm like, okay, Matt, I'm done. Brad, it's awesome. Let's just train together and keep on getting better and not put my body through, you know, the, the turmoil of, of cutting weight and the aches and bruises. Uh, Demetrius, just do you feel – that being the, the, the record holder or tying the record for most title defenses, do you feel you deserve maybe more recognition from, from just the, maybe the casual or layman fan? That you, you know, I'm not, I'm not searching for that. That's not why I do this sport. I'm not going out there and have everybody put that, you know, vote on me to be prom king for the UFC. You know, I'm not here showing the best fighter in the world, and I think tonight I proved that by, you know, dominating a, a, a world-class grappler. <clears throat> uh, I don't think I got touched on the feet. And striving for more as a champion. You know, a lot of champions get in there and they think they know what they're doing. They, get, they don't trust their coaches and they jump camp, they can't. But for me, I stay focused. I believe in my coaches and I believe, I thank them so much for putting so much time and effort um, into me and away from their family, so. 
did you did you watch Tim Elliott fight at all? Did you get a chance I, to watch? I did not. Okay. I, I can tell you right now, I'm sure it was a massive scramble going back and forth, and I'm pretty sure that's how the fight went down. You know, he was that was a pretty tough defense you had against him a, a while ago. You never know who your next opponent is. He probably put himself in position to maybe be the guy you have to break the record against. How do you, if that's, no matter what, what, it, what do you feel like Tim brings to that class? I think my first John Dotson fight was probably my toughest title defense. He dropped me three times. Tim only had me in the guillotine for maybe a minute and 40 seconds. There's 25 minutes in a title fight, so I think you better check your math, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> I'm Demetrius. Yeah. Is that belt yours? Are you going to be taking I'm taking this motherfucker home. So, <laughs> so now you have two belts, right? I two got two belts. Okay, what's the story in the eight other belts that are owed to you? You know what? Hopefully they send it to me, you know what? But uh, I, I got my two belts, one for Tyron and one for Maverick, so they, can sh they don't have to fight over one. And then, uh, you know what, I I'll sit down with Dana White and talk to him. You know, like I said, I just want to capture that, that photo that Floyd Mayweather has done. Uh, Andre Ward just did it, you know, the champion, all, all my belts. You know, I'll, I'll even bring my amateur belts just to show the process I went through to get all these belts. I mean, 10 title offenses, that's – sometimes when I take a step back and smell the rose, I'm like, damn, I've been in champion since 2012, September, when I won it in Toronto, Canada. And <laughs> I'm still here today. Awesome. Congrats. Thanks, man. Demetrius, um, before you could even really get back out of the, probably out of the octagon, you were asked a question about Cody No Love. Um, shortly thereafter on Twitter, he mentioned that he feels like you're still ducking, you're, that you're dodging him. Um, is it just more the case that you were, you have more unfinished business in the flyweight division? You know, the whole the whole thing with Cody, it's, I'm not really worried about it, dude. Like, if somebody comes, I've never told anybody down to come to my weight class, right? Like, I. I you know, I have nothing but love for the guy, but at the same time, he, he just won a belt. You know, he just won a belt. I've, I've defended it 10 times. I've been in the sport longer than he has. Um, like I said, if he comes down and wants to fight at 125, we, we welcome it. But he doesn't get to dictate. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe he does get to dictate Porter and Dana White. Or I, I, I don't know. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, it is what it is. If Cody comes down to 125 and UFC deems him ready for a title shot, perfect. We, we can get him up. But until then, he's got to fight T.J. Dolsha. Then he, they just signed a new 135er, uh, Molin Merez, and Dominic Cruz is still there. So for me, I'm just focused on, you know, making history, going for 11 title defenses, and then, then, then I have options. And I can decide, like, you know what, maybe I'll go up to 35 and fight him for his belt. You don't have to cut 25. Just You just keep on defending your belt. You get three or four belts on, you know, title defenses, and I'll come up. Then I'll fight you. Then you don't have to worry about cutting 10 more pounds. Or unless you want to, then that's fine, too. You obviously mentioned a fairly hefty number in the cage. How confident are you that for your next one you're going to get past that million dollars? Oh, I better. <laughs> I better. And is that, I mean, obviously that's part of the conversation that will take place with Dana as well. And, and have you talked to him about it already, and, and what does he think? We should have asked him about it when he was in here. You know, I, I'm straight up and honest, dude. Like, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm, I'm a great company guy. I don't bash my company. You know, I don't bash my opponents, never miss weight, never done any drugs, not at home beating my wife, crashing my car, do cocaine, all that stuff. I'm not asked for a lot. You're just, you're just a video game nerd. That's yeah, it, I'm just right? a video game. All I do is go home, drink beer, play video games. That's all I do. And change diapers. That's all I do. Do you, do you start to feel like when you're in fights like this that you are watching yourself from the outside and that you, like, are a a video game character at some point? I think that's how Matt and Brad feel probably. But for me, like I said, when I'm in the fight, I always think it's worse than it actually happens. Then when I get to get home and see it and see the, my footwork and, and rethink my mind process in the fight, then I can sit down and be like, okay, that's, that's legit, that's good. Uh, I could have took advantage of him there and all that stuff. Demetrius, I just have one question. Uh, going back to your division in that 11th title defense, you'll hear a lot from fighters in general and, and champions, you know, it doesn't matter who you put in front of me, but if you absolutely 100% had to pick a name for an 11th title defense, who is it? It would be Chell Sonnen, because he would sell the hell out of that pay-per-view. <laughs> you said pick a name and I did. There you go. All right, or, or Conor McGregor, I mean, I mean, nowadays everybody's talking about big money fights, right? Big money fights. If I truly... I am not afraid of one man in this whole UFC octagon roster. I truly don't care. What's the worst going to happen to me? I lose. I get knocked out. 
Yeah, well, you've already defended this 10 Well, times. I know, but I just, I mean, a lot of people are calling him, oh, I'll fight him. He's scared. I was like, dude, I'll fucking fight Conor McGregor for the biggest payday of my life. Right. If I got knocked out, perfect. Thanks, Conor. You're, you weigh 170 pounds, but guess what? I'm going to be laughing all the way to the bank. So when people try to call me out, like, oh, you're scared. It's just like, no, dude. Like, come out at 125, we can fight. But if you ask me, who would I like to fight? And I know I'm going to make the most money. I'll fight Conor McGregor. Right. It's red panty night, right? Was that? It's red panty night. No, 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 no. We, we passed that shit. There ain't no more red panty night. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Dana mentioned earlier, uh, earlier he saw you backstage after your victory, and you were asking your coaches, what did I do wrong? What did you do wrong tonight? <laughs> uh, for me, I would have liked to um, – Obviously, there's everybody probably looks at it as perfect, but there's times in the fight when I get him covered up that I could have stayed there a little bit longer to make him miss more and then capitalize on the right hand. Um, uh, I wouldn't mind getting him in the clinch a little more, but it's always weird. For me, I, I'm always I, – I, like, I see things. I'm like, is that right? Could I have done better there? Um, but that's probably the biggest thing. Like when he was covering up, be there in his face, and then when he turned and threw his right hook – make a miss and then hit him with that right hand, the right hand, left hook, right hand, or high ten. So I, I, I really wanted a knockout tonight. I really, really wanted to knock him out. But, hey, submit the black belt. Don't get no better than that. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. UFC Fight Night returns April 22nd with another action-packed card. In the main event, Cub Swanson follows up his Fight of the Year win by taking on Conor McGregor's protege, Artem Lobov. And legendary Ultimate Fighter winner, Diego Sanchez, meets raging ally Aquinta. Plus, former Tennessee volunteer football star, Ovin St. Preux, takes on Marcos Rogerio de Lima. Don't miss UFC Fight Night, live Saturday, April 22nd, only on Fox Sports 1. Saturday, May 13th, two belts are on the line on the biggest, baddest UFC card of the year. Heavyweight champion Stipe Miocic faces former champ Junior Dos Santos in a rematch of their epic slugfest. And undefeated strawweight champion Joanna Janjacek takes on explosive Brazilian Jessica Andrade. Plus, former champ Frankie Edgar battles rising star Yair Rodriguez. UFC 211, Miocic versus Dos Santos, only on pay-per-view. Two of the biggest personalities in MMA. I make the predictions and I make them wrong. Now host the best podcast in the sport. I'm the first guest. <laughs> We're not going to mention the eight <laughs> fighters that said no. UFC Unfiltered with Jim Norton and Matt Serra brings you the latest in fight news and analysis, behind the scenes stories, pop culture debates, celebrity guests, and more. We have The Rock calling in. How are you, man? I just want to see a great fight. <laughs> Hear new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and UFC.com. UFC Unfiltered, powered by digital media. UFC Fight Night returns a